virtual reality is very complex and interesting. Here I will highlight some recent history, ways that we're going to work, and then we'll look at applications being done by others. In this MOOC, you will only begin island development. If you choose to expand later, eventually you will ask, how do you get ownership and how do you get providers? Maybe you're interested in being a developer or a builder. Or your focus might be more on what happens inside the virtual world, the content and programs, or you'll always be interested in how do the users interact there. In the past, virtual reality was very costly. Accommodations had to be made before the open source movement. When you move into virtual reality, there are several different approaches you could take. You could go to the providers, such as Second Life, and you could rent islands, you could get your own avatar and have a little island, or, or you could actually just borrow islands and make field trips. But today, you may really want to go and develop your own. With open source, you now can get the code to create your own islands, and we'll see how some of this works. Second Life began the most recent large-scale efforts with virtual reality and about three or four years ago they started to create a community that could use their work for free. Providers are also groups like Active World and Harvard used those for River City. Uh, that actually predates Second Life but it's not as large. Second Life spun off its source code, you'll see other things starting. For example, this reaction grid is another world provider that started up and Pathfinder Lester, who you might see in the background here, actually comes and does presentations about virtual reality in general. Now, when you get into virtual reality, you're actually looking at it through something called a viewer. So when you're in Second Life, you're automatically using their viewer. But Second Life, when they opened up their source code, created a need for different types of viewers. So they have been emerging, and there are a few of them on this page. What you're going to see is as you get going, if you start moving into your own development, it's a complex world. Something called OpenSim, which is actually gotten under Open Simulators, started with the open source movement, and they created a community. This is just a screen capture from their website. You can join the community, and if you're interested, go down to a very deep level. This was just a screen capture of a page I took from them where you can get down to the programming level, you can look at servers, and they really are a very good community. If you're working with them, you can start drilling down to some complex levels as to whether you want just one island or whether you want to move from other islands which is called a hypergrid. You can go from one place to another. But it also shows you that, and I took this from the Open Simulator page, that there's a lot that goes on underneath. You can see that there are different things happening on servers to get people logged in, to hold the inventory for avatars, to have the buildings ready. And so over time, communities have developed. Uh, this Av Avacon is a fairly new one and is really looking for ways to bring people on board. So I'll encourage you to look at some of the communities. Not everyone wanted to create their own simulated environment. So business applications began and Hypergrid Business is a wonderful way to find out about these applications. You'll find now that you have more vendors that are available to you so that you can create low-cost virtual worlds. To make you the most productive and flexible, we are going to use an open source vendor, Kitely. Here you can make entire islands using free and modifiable terrains and buildings. These can serve as starting points for your work. Behind me you'll see some of the free resources that I have available to you on my own island. Each week you will be guided by documentation that contains procedural tutorials and videos, and by other documentation that shows conceptual and design approaches. While I prepare to have some fun, let's visit the work of some colleagues. Here, Al created a location to bring new people to learn the art of video production through his own island studio, which would include a corral area where he could demonstrate the effects of different types of lighting and a showcase place where he could exhibit his work, a TV studio for rehearsing live shows, and with a central staging area for lectures and events and much more. 
Irene's Island, for those students with English as a second language, starts the journey in a central dome meeting area, surrounded by placards orienting visitors as to how to use the island. Here, visitors from different countries can meet, converse, and even invite their families to visit these relaxing mountaintop spaces. A shopping area on Irene's Island provides her students with practice in basic cultural and everyday skills and she repurposed some buildings to create an attractive meeting space and counseling area for her students so that they could come for any needed services. On her island, Marjorie repurposed many buildings and terrains and added her own designs to create an artist colony with innovative buildings, a retreat area, shops and studios where art could be exhibited, a gallery space so art students could practice designing an exhibit, and a recreation area with some of her original sculptures in the background. Terry actually created a first. She brought her work to the Open Simulator Conference. Let's hear her talk about some of her planning. So this really did give me an opportunity to bring um, objects in like our uh, welcome bridge behind us and then the um, information booth um, and you know the tiki and so forth. So plus it gave me a timeline to get it all done in. Let's close with the highlights of this conference, starting with a holographic avatar that moves with your movements, and then showing some of the diverse presentations that you will select from throughout the course. Or maybe you can learn from presentations on business training or urban planning, or economic research. Maybe it will be on language learning and virtual spaces, or using 3D modeling software. Maybe seeing how historic studies are conducted, or science and training labs or learning how librarians are bringing literature into virtual settings. There is no end to what you can create or do with and within virtual environments.